Podcast. Today I'm going to be bringing you a quite advanced tutorial in After Effects. Now this is something which you're going to have to learn the basics of After Effects before you watch this, so I recommend going to watch some other tutorials on how to do the basics in After Effects, the basic keyframing and audio tracking and stuff like that um, before you attempt this. Now what I'm going to be showing you is actually something which I've been doing in a lot of my videos lately, um, and I'm going to be showing you an example just quickly. Uh, the example I'm going to show you actually is a video which went up on Saturday, which is, uh, let me just find it, it was the welcome video anyway, it was, um, it's on my desktop, I think. the plan, I oh, can't remember where I saved it, ah there it is, so I'm just going to show you this. Um, and you'll get an idea. As Jim is away, we need a big plan for the next two weeks. So here's what we're going to be doing. So you get the idea, we've kind of got a funky little um, transitions and text coming in and stuff like that. And it's all very, very like, cool. So we're going to start off by first of all making a new composition. Uh, I've got mine set out to 720 um, at 29.97 FPS. And I'm going to put it to one minute long. Um, there we go, that's one minute long. Now what we can do is we can go on layer, new, and we want to create a solid. Now I like to use quite like uh, washed out colours I guess you could call them. Not quite pure colours. So we're going to use this pinky reddish sort of colour here. First of all to start off. And what we want to do is we want to make this transition in. Um, but what we're going to have to do first is get a song to do that with. So we're going to get a song. Um, so let me think of a song which we could use. We could import. We'll import the song which we used for the last video, actually, um, which was this. I'll just get this. We'll put it on the track. And now what I'm going to do is a very important part. I'm going to do a RAM preview of this. Now to do a RAM preview, you simply put this button up here, or you press the zero on your number pad. Um, and while I'm doing that, I want to map out every single beat in the song. So I'm going to do that by pressing the asterisk on my a number pad as well. On every single beat. So I'll just do that quickly. So I've mapped all those out now, all the beats that I want, um, and I can sync these beats in with the track. So I'm going to double tap L, and I can see that there is a beat here, there's a beat here, there's a beat here. And I've mapped it to all of these beats, of the large spikes in the in the clip. So we've got one here on the large spike, we've got one here on the large spike, and stuff like that. Now these won't be perfect, but they are very, very close, and then it won't be noticeable if they're any different. So what we can now do is we can go on our clip and I want this to come in at this beat here. So I'm going to click on this on our solid and I'm going to click P for position. Um, and I want it to be here at this point. I want it to be in the scene at this point. So I'm going to click this keyframe button. I'm going to go back a little bit. Just a little bit. And I'm going to slide it out to the side. So now we'll get a transition where it comes in from the side. Now there's no motion to that whatsoever, so I'm going to click this motion button here, and I'm going to click toggle switch to the modes, and click on the motion there. And that'll give it motion, it'll give it a fast paced motion. So that comes in like that, and maybe I want another solid to go in, maybe I'm not happy with that colour, so we're going to make a new solid. Um, and we're going to make this one a blue. And I want that to be in at this beat, so we're going to do the same again, P. Keyframe it at that point, and then have it come down from, oh, yeah, down from the top, for example. 
That's going to come down from the top. Again, I'm going to motion track it. I'm going to motion uh, blur it. Like that. On the next beat, I want some text to come in. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to click on here, and I'm going to write crafting motion. But I'm just going to write crafting. Like so. Now I can just wait for this to load. There we go. I'm actually going to put this on full preview as well, so it's in the highest quality. You can see that we've got crafting in here like so. Now, I might want this to just slide in uh, from the top, for example. So I'm going to do... I'm going to... In fact, I'm going to make it slide in from the side. So I've got crafting, and I want motion as well. So I'm going to just put that in. And we'll make that a little bit bigger as well. There, I think that should do. So we're going to click on motion on both of these. We're going to click on P on both of these as well. I want them both to be in by this beat here. So I'm going to keyframe them both at that beat. Now what I also want to do is I want to alt, alt, hold alt and click the keyframe button. Um, and I want to type in wiggle, open bracket, 2, comma, 10. And I'm going to do that on both of them. So, and that's basically going to make it, so if you see, they're going to start wiggling a little bit, which makes it a lot more lively. Now we're going to go a little bit before this, just before, and I'm going to slide this just a bit that way, just a little bit. And it will automatically create a new keyframe. And I want to slide the other one just a bit that way. We'll do it about there. And then I'm going to go back a little bit more. And I want it to be all the way, the opposite way to which I just dragged it. So I can put that one that way. And that one, oops, not that one. All the way that way. Now this is going to create this effect where it goes in. It's going to zoom in. And then it's going to like rubber band itself. So it's going to go over the amount and then it's going to come back on itself. So we'll just preview that. One second, what we've got so far. I'm pressing zero on our pad, if you remember right. Now. So we can see it comes in like that. We can alter these keyframes before. We can zoom in a little bit and space them out a little bit better. And make it look a little bit better with the timing, stuff like that. And that is all there is to it, really. Now, there is other effects as well which we can use. We can make them come in from the top and the bottom. Uh, we could also make them scale as well. So, I'm just going to do a quick example of scaling in this method as well. So, we're going to use this B again here. Um, and I did actually use this in the Feed the Beast video. Um, so, if we do crafting, just crafting. We can put that in the center. Now, this has got an anchor point, which is at the bottom of the screen. So I don't want that to be at the bottom of the screen, because if I scale that now, it's going to scale to that anchor point. It's going to scale off that anchor point. I don't want it to be like that. So I'm going to press A on my keyboard, and I want to move that anchor point so it's in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be close. Like so. So it's in the center now, so if I scale it, it's going to scale from the center. Good. So what I can do is compress S. Um, we want to keyframe it to there, to that position where it's on the beat. Uh, just go a little bit before, and I want it to be bigger than it was. And then a little bit before that, and I want it to be zero. Zero percent. And we can see that it comes in, it gets big, and then it goes back to normal. It goes back to the normal size. Goes big and goes back to normal. We can add motion to that and it makes it look 10 times better. It's zooming out at you. Which is what we want to create. And we, don't forget, we can also add a wiggle to that as well. Alt click here. And so I'm doing wiggle bracket 2, 2, 10. Um, 
put it back on here, and it's going to wiggle as well at the same time. Which is very, very cool. Now you might want to get rid of that. You might want it to transition out. Now that you can do the same way. You can transition out a different way if you want. I could have it transitioning out on this beat. I could press P. I might want to keyframe it so it's just before I want it to be in that same position. And then on the beat, I want it to be out of there. Like that. We can make it so in between those beats, we can have it so it pulls back on itself. So it goes back the other way. So it's like a rubber band effect and goes outwards. Which look quite cool. So we can have it zoom out like that. It's really a lot of different things you can do with using keyframing and creating your motion images. Now, I know a lot of people will like this for Call of Duty editing. I used it for basically an intro video and stuff like that. I've used it in many different scenarios and they're all pretty cool. So thanks for watching guys. Um, I'll just give you one quick extra example here. Um, find one more example. Here on the latest Feed the Beast episode um, I did a motion intro on this for the first time. So the text comes in, background fades out, and then the text goes out. Which is very, very cool for the start of your episodes and stuff like that. Thanks for watching, remember to subscribe, like, and comment for more tutorials and gameplays. See you next time.